in India, we tend to use this left and right terms very loosely. Um, but caste, it's very important, right? These caste wars and typifying it in Seattle the way they have done. What is, what is your view on this? Actually, I did read the legislation. I read hmm. the amendment. It's not many pages. It was just two, three pages. The most fascinating aspect of that legislation was that basically when the areas they cover, they include Africa also. Huh? Hmm. So they, they mentioned certain areas that practice quote-unquote what they call casteism. Coincidentally, it skips all the Western European nations and all, all of America and Canada and Australia and New Zealand. So basically, this was once again, if I was to say the white man preaching again to the other plebeians that, hey, look at me. I'm not casters. Let me reform you, you plebeian. Come here to me. So that's what the legislation is. But the problem is not just the legislation. The problem is the defense of the community in the diaspora too. The defense is a mishmash of caste, is a Western colonial construct. One simple question one needs to ask to those people is, if you, even if you look at genetic data for the last 1500 years in this subcontinent, especially in India, then Pakistan, less so in Bangladesh, they have pretty much become non-endogamous. Uh, but in India, endogamy is highly prevalent. Arthas, we don't marry outside of our uh, groups. But as far as I'm concerned, the caste legislation is a very normal process in any society where they flip the lens from the individual to the group. So it's a question of caste is essentially at its very core a question of mobility. How mobile is the system? You know, Kapil Kapoor, who I used to interact very uh, closely with, you know, once said that you, people assume that when Manu spoke about the Brahmins being the head and the Shudras being the feet, that the that person, that Purusha was standing up, what if they were lying down? What he was trying to say ah. is that if they were, if the yeah. Purusha is lying down, ah. then everybody is on the same level, sure. okay. right? Now, and there it, is and then, never that level playing field. There though. isn't. Remember, our two great epics are not written by Brahmin. There were two fascinating books that I read when I used to study over there and live over there in America. One was how the Irish became white and the other one was how the Jews became white. So mm. apparently there was a time where Irish people were not considered white and the Jews were also not considered white. So the culture in the United States of America is you have arrived when you become white. Indians have become white adjacent. Slim you mean it. proximity has made Indians what? More liberal and hence illiberal or what? What is it? What no, I think saying? fair and lovely has finally won. <laughs> Okay. So all that fair and lovely we put. Finally, the Americans said, Tumne kaam kya, ab tum white ho gaye. What do you mean in the sense of this white adjacent? Like? White adjacent means that you are privileged mm. because you have too much money. Because if you look at data in America, you have the highest amount of money literally parked with Indians and not just Indians. Let's mm. get real. Hindus. See, the problem with the Hindu community is every time they are faced with the question of caste, they come up with these tomes of apologia. This is a very unique phenomenon where the Indians in India have learned the apologia of caste from North American Indians and Hindus. We always discuss these things as esoteric debates within our society. True. They are not. They are geopolitical issues. They are issues with, through which India's rise will be contained or there's an attempt to contain India's rise. So what, are we, what can you hit India with? Caste. If you can break the back of Indians in the Silicon Valley, that'll be really a powerful weapon. You can see already the divisions are coming up again in Punjab. Yeah. Already, you know, there's a simmering of, uh, of the Khalistani movement again. In places like Australia, you know, many of us were astonished to see that this has now reached Australia. It was always yeah. there in England. The attack and on temples there. Indeed, attack on temples, the coming together, the referendum happening in Australia. If you really take a step back and think about it, who in the world, the, the powers that be today, wants another billion strong country to grow at 6-7% and hit a trillion dollar mark. Because once you hit trillion dollars, that's it. You know, there you've cleared. I mean, now then your rise is impossible to stop. And then you cannot not take that country in, you know, uh, with importance. Nobody wants another country like that because the fear is it'll become another China. They would much rather want a South Korea hmm. where you're prosperous, economically prosperous, but you entirely tow their line on every other subject. Hmm. So people want another Australia or a, or, or a South Korea. They do not want another China. Now, I'm not suggesting that India will become another China, not at all. I believe India's rise is inherently peaceful and India will create a different model for itself. But that's the fear. 
and therefore every attempt will be made to stop India's rise. Click here to watch the full episode.